A young American couple is arriving to spend a wonderful vacation together. Riley has brought an old camera to take pictures, and his girlfriend Janai gladly poses for them. After settling into their hotel room, they go on a tour around Iceland, which takes them through active geysers and hot springs. Later over dinner, Janai wonders if they'll be able to find film for such an old camera, but Riley assures her that he brought enough and turns down her offer to buy him a modern one. He explains that he doesn't want a computer auto-correcting everything and prefers to capture the moment with all its imperfections. Afterward they continue to visit all the important touristic places, like a historic church and some beautiful waterfalls. In the evening they return to the hotel to sleep, but later in the middle of the night, Janai wakes up and looks through the window, noticing a bright light suddenly taking over the sky for a few seconds before disappearing. The next morning, the couple goes downstairs to have breakfast, but they see the buffet empty and not a single employee around. They decide to have breakfast at a cafe instead, but when they go outside, they find the streets empty and silent too. After double-checking the time to be sure it isn't too early, they wonder if it's a special holiday, and begin entering different buildings, to no avail. It's as if every single person in the city has disappeared except them. Panicking, they do a bit more wandering and searching until they finally give up and accept the truth. They are alone. They try to call relatives on their phones, but nobody answers, and when Riley checks the television, he discovers that all the news channels are down. Social media also is silent, and the couple decides to return to the hotel. Riley uses his laptop and confirms the internet is working, but news sites haven't been updated since last night. Desperate for an explanation, Riley checks security cameras across the world, but to their shock the streets are empty literally everywhere. Deep in denial, Riley says there's got to be someone else out there, so they head out to search for people again, but the result is the same. Getting agitated and desperate for a solution, Riley notices a car with an open window and they use it to search the city more thoroughly, yet still finding nobody. Eventually they drive all the way out to the countryside, never finding anyone. Janai wonders if the apocalypse has finally come, and upon Riley's prodding she tries contacting her mother again to no avail. When they finally give up, they try to find comfort in the fact they least they have each other. When night falls, they return to the hotel, and Janai is so tired and upset that she gets cranky when she has to ask Riley twice to close the blinds. The next morning, Riley wakes up first and tries to wake Janai too, but she is still in a bad mood and refuses to leave the bed. Riley leaves her alone for a while, and when he returns later, Janai asks him how they'll get home, but Riley has no idea. Janai still feels homesick, so Riley tries to make the gingerbread latte she likes so much. It's not very good, but Janai appreciates the effort. Afterward they decide to loot the nearby grocery store. Janai only has a few things in her hand out of habit, but Riley has entered survival mode and walks by pushing trolley full of groceries. Then Riley goes looking for a new car with more room to carry all the stuff they want, since nobody can stop them now. When they return to the hotel, Riley grabs their bags and announces it is time for an upgrade, so the couple goes looking for a nice house to stay in. Once they find one they both approve of, Riley quickly gets comfortable, but Janai can't help wondering if it truly is this simple. Next they go to a clothing store. Janai again starts only grabbing an item or two, but soon Riley reminds her of the situation and together they try all kinds of outfits without limiting themselves, which brings a bit of fun back into their lives. They also take some alcohol and drink while playing Monopoly and bantering playfully. The following morning during breakfast, Janai wonders if they are being tested, and in return Riley asks if she believes in God and if everything happens according to his plan. However Janai replies that belief and faith are different things. Trying to comfort her, Riley tells her that the world is currently their oyster to do whatever they want. Afterward they drive to the countryside, and Janai is so relaxed that she puts her feet on the window and lets the wind take her shoes away. Eventually they make it to the geothermal pools, and Riley lays a cloth on the grass so they can lie together and cuddle. When Riley decides to take a nap, Janai stands and starts removing her clothes while making her way to the pool. Riley notices this and follows her as he takes pictures until Janai has finally removed her last accessory and jumps into the water. Riley doesn't hesitate to follow her example and soon the couple is getting frisky in the pool. Then the couple takes a nap together, and a few hours later, Janai wakes up first and decides to go for a walk through the beautiful fields. When Riley wakes up too, he continues taking photos of her looking beautiful among the flowers. In the evening they return to the city, and in the grocery store, Riley is fooling around like a child, which makes him fall and get his arm hurt. That evening they agree to have a romantic dinner and they even dress up all nicely for the occasion. However Janai can't stop thinking about what happened in the store and calls Riley out for his behavior, pointing out they need to be careful because if something happens there are no doctors or firemen that can help them. However Riley thinks she is exaggerating and just wants to keep on having fun, which upsets Janai and causes her to storm off. Moments later, Riley walks through the deserted city with a bouquet in his hand and makes it to the house they claimed, finding Janai lying down in a bad mood. Not liking seeing her like this, Riley promises he will be more careful from now on. Then Janai gets up and talks about her favorite book, regretting that she didn't bring it for her vacation. Riley suggests finding another copy around, 
But Janai only wants her own because it was a gift from her father and it served as her record of all the important and meaningful things that happened in her life. For example, the first time she admitted she loved Riley she wrote it in that book. Riley smiles but also tells her they have everything they'll ever need, beautiful scenery and each other. The rest they can just build it. Janai doesn't take it well and insists that she wants to go home, but there is nothing they can do about it. After another excursion and lots of new pictures, the couple returns home and Janai discovers the tap water isn't running anymore. Riley eats blueberry yogurt and this triggers another argument because that's not the one that expires first. Janai wants him to be more careful with the food because they won't have infinite stock, and Riley responds they can plant and hunt, yet Janai mocks the idea. Sometime later, Riley swims alone in the pool while Janai walks to a church where she finds a statue with weird marks on it. Janai can't help talking to it, desperate for a sign that tells her the meaning behind all this. During another trip outside the city, the couple arrives at some hot springs. Riley asks Janai to listen to the heartbeat of the world and admits he loves Iceland. Afterward they reach a beach with volcanic rocks and Riley tries to share a legend about trolls but Janai ruins the moment by pointing out they're out of drinking water. Next they stop by an abandoned plane fuselage, and Riley takes a bunch of pictures because he thinks it's beautiful. However this upsets Janai and points out it's just dead garbage that outlived its usefulness. She also yells that Riley can't just change the scenery to magically cheer her up. An exasperated Riley asks what he should do, but Janai just tells him to open his eyes and drives away, leaving Riley to sleep inside the plane. That night Janai sleeps in the car in the middle of nowhere, and in the morning she returns to the plane to check on Riley. When he wakes up, neither of them says a word, Janai simply shares something to drink before they return to the city together. The rest of the day, Riley walks around town and takes photos of all the graffiti and public art he can find. A particular piece of artwork with haunting eyes spooks the heck out of him, causing him to toss his film away. Meanwhile Janai passes the time scrolling through her laptop, looking for notifications and trying to get in contact with people, to no avail. Later Janai decides to go to church to pray while Riley visits various stores to start collecting pieces for a project he has in mind. When he takes the elevator, he is startled by the doors suddenly closing, and for a moment he thinks he's locked inside. Fortunately the doors soon reopen on their own and Riley can go home. He doesn't see Janai around when he arrives, so keeps himself busy building contraptions. Meanwhile Janai is feeding a horse and enjoying the company of the animals, since it's the only new sight of life she's seen in a while. Sometime later, the couple is traveling again, and Janai drives while listening to old messages in her voicemail in order to remember what her family and friends sounded like. After passing near some glaciers, they get out of the car and explore around. Then they sit together on a glacier and Janai talks about the force of nature that wipes the earth clean, saying that maybe God got impatient. However Riley thinks the future is uncertain and he won't give up on their relationship. Later, the couple returns to the city and Janai finds a place to develop the pictures. She also finds a flower shop, but her excitement quickly disappears when she realizes all the flowers are dead. Riley convinces her to look for flowers somewhere else, pointing out that they need a change of scenery. Eventually they arrive at a lakeside cabin, which has a fireplace that they want to use. Riley decides to gather some wood and when he approaches the forest, he is incredibly shocked to find one more human around called Nils. The man doesn't seem to be doing well and the couple immediately shares their supplies with him before taking him inside. Nils confirms he hasn't seen anyone else either and that he left the city after the incident because if the world ends, he wants to be here when it happens. During their talk, Nils doesn't stop coughing badly, and Riley tries to encourage him to survive with them. Janai is also grateful that they've found him, but no matter what words they use, Nils seems to have accepted his fate, which irritates Riley. Later in the middle of the night while Riley sleeps, Janai sits in front of the fireplace and tells Nils about their vacation and how much she misses home. In return Nils tells him about his own family, which became strangers to him because he spent his life on the sea. He also mentions the Welsh word heareth, which means grief for a home one can never return or never was. Janai thinks God has forsaken them, but Nils thinks everything is essentially meaningless. The next morning, Riley wakes Janai up and brings bad news. Nils died in his sleep. Janai goes to confirm it with her own eyes while Riley goes outside to start digging a hole to bury him. When Janai comes out, she says she doesn't see the point in burying Nils, triggering another argument over if they should concentrate on finding more people or on surviving. Riley says they've already searched enough, but Janai thinks they hadn't really been looking. When they return to the city, Janai grabs some duct tape and begins marking abandoned houses with it. Riley follows her to point out that this isn't finding the living, it's actually marking the dead, he also begs her to come home. However Janai says that there's no home here. Another argument ensues, and while Riley can tell Janai is looking for celestial answers, he thinks it's pointless because they can't change anything anyway. He tries to convince Janai that they can still live a good life together, but Janai admits she doesn't even know what that is anymore. Sometime later, Riley finishes building a windmill before he tries with Janai again. He leads her to a river and asks her to remember the glacier they sat on, explaining that the water that melts from that glacier is what creates this river. His point is to remind Janai that life is always trying, causing the couple to share an emotional hug and a kiss. 
Later over dinner, they share the last of their water. While she's washing the dishes, Janai's laptop receives an email, and Janai runs to check it with obvious excitement. However when she opens it, she discovers it is just a photo sent by Riley. Janai cries in disappointment and frustration as she finally accepts that there's nobody else out there. The next morning, Riley finds a huge white envelope with his name on it. After activating the water pump he's built, he checks the envelope's contents and finds the developed photos. However seeing Janai's expression on them worries him, so he rushes out of the house and drives around the city to find her. Eventually he finds Janai's car parked near the geothermal pool, and when he comes closer, he's devastated to find Janai's body floating in the water. It seems she ended things for herself because she couldn't take the situation anymore. Riley jumps into the pool and takes Jeannie out, but there's nothing he can do. Then he tries to follow her example, but his instincts to survive are too strong. Afterward, Riley clings to Janai's body, crying his heart out. Once he's calmed down, he decides to walk away, leaving Janai behind. Riley returns to his car and starts driving away, wondering what will happen to him now he's alone for real. 